Hello, everybody. Welcome to the EEC Extra interview series with our Eurovision 2023 participants. And today I am very excited to give a very big welcome or actually a bienvenue to Lazara from La Grande France. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you for that warm welcoming. So nice to meet you. Um, Eurovision is coming up. How excited are you? I'm very excited. Uh, well, it's um, a little bit stressful, but I can't wait to be there. So when when are you leaving for Liverpool? Uh, I think at um, the the third of May, something like that. Yeah, a bit of a week before the contest. Yeah. Mm. Um, I want to go back into your childhood up until today, and basically, when we go to your child, we go to Canada. Um, yes. Did you, I mean Canada is on the other side of the planet for us? Was Eurovision a thing in your childhood? In my childhood, yes, just because my mother used to sing to me uh, a special song from Marie Miriam L'Enfant L'Oiseau. And uh, so that's my connection with uh, with Eurovision. Other than that, in Quebec, uh, we don't have a lot of, you know, it, it doesn't pass on TV. So we, I lost many years of Eurovision and it's been three years now that I'm, I'm living in France. And that I reconnected with uh, the Eurovision um, world because it's a different world it's, uh, <laughs> from itself. Yeah, it's something else. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is something else. Now, you're not the first Canadian to go to Eurovision. Of course, Celine Dion is the absolute uh, world famous example. Um, but Natasha St. Pierre is the only Canadian to have ever represented France before in 2001. Um, was she famous in, in Canada as well? Yeah, she had her time of fame back in the days. Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and Eurovision is coming to Canada next year. Eurovision Canada is launching um, later this year. What are you expecting for that? Have you heard anything about it? Of Sorry, what? Eurovision Canada. They're doing a Canadian version of Eurovision this year. They do? Yes. Oh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Mm. Yeah, they <laughs> sold it to uh, to the United States, and now Canada is next on the list. So, um... oh wow! Well, I, I can't wait to see it. We have great talents in Canada, as you know. So, I think it's going to be a fierce competition. It should be. It should definitely. <laughs> be. Um, now, you mentioned you moved to France three years ago. Um, mm. How did moving to France change you? What changed in your being? Well, my English is not that good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um actually it's for three years I was doing back and forth because of my career I started three years ago my career and uh now I just move in November like for good and uh it's different you know um but the people are very warm with me and uh but it's different from Canada obviously I miss being at home but now uh here and live in Paris it's my it's my new home and I feel very French well, yeah. here I am. <laughs> well, about your English, that your English is still very, very good. So, yeah. Oh, um, thank you. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I was, I was sort of when listening to Evidemar, I was listening to it, and there's this final bit, which is, of course, you know, "A chanter la grande France." Yes. That is a very interesting line to to hear from someone who's actually not been in France that long. Why did you incorporate that line? Why is it so important to you? Because um, I learned to sing, uh, listening to the great uh, singer from from France, and there's a thing. It's it's the great French music, you know, Aznavour, Edith Piaf, Barbara, and I learned because before I did it, I didn't know how to sing at all. It was catastrophic. It was not good at all. And as a French Canadian, you know, representing France and uh, Europe, it was really important for me to, you know, to ask, did I do it good? Is it okay? You know, is it enough? So, yeah, it was just a, a little, you know, pick to people. Yeah. And did you get the reassurance from the French people already that they're going, yes, you did very well, we're happy? With you. Yeah, but uh, when I started my career here three three years ago, people didn't know that, that I was Canadian in, anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, and you mentioned you mentioned Asnavour and you made it mentioned Piaf, but there's one other thing I definitely want to discuss with you because I believe you're a fan of hers and so am I. Dalida. 
Yes, because oh, um, my wife. <laughs> we have to share her then, but yeah, uh, love it. Um, this is the most difficult question you can ask any fan of any artist, but what is your favorite Dalida song? Oh my God, oh no, this is very hard. I know. It's, um, there's so many, and you know, today sometimes they, they bring new song that uh, from her repertoire but uh, it's very hard but i really love her adaptation of um uh c'était quoi la chanson sorry the 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 serge lama um, oh yes sorry sometimes my brain, my, my, my brain is like uh, but the suis malade for her interpretation of it was just incredible and i didn't know it was not her song um yeah that's i think that's my favorite song of of her but there's it's very hard there's so many many there, there are so many <laughs> so yes yeah and i think she's been malade has of course been dalida has sang it but lara fabian's version is also just in yeah, it's it's very hard, but I love the Dalida version. It's because she was very, you know, everybody know her story, but she was she was sick. She she was very very malad, and you can feel it. And and she she believed every word of it, and you believed it. It, it just broke my heart when I saw her the way she was singing that song. So, it I think for her it was, in my opinion, one of her greatest um, songs. Yeah, that was a very good achievement. I mean, listening to that just gets you goosebumps and it goes straight into your heart. And um, Now, I imagine that that achievement, giving someone goosebumps and going straight into their hearts is something you also want to achieve as a as a singer. And oh. how do you do you feel? What is the message you want to give us with Evidemment? Well, I think that the message is it's uh, it's very clear for me. It's everybody can, you know, me. I've been I write song. I, I write about my problems, and I think we all have the same problem. <laughs> and for me, when I wrote this song, I felt very oppressed, and I, I had to take a decision in my life to take my life uh, in my own hand and start believing what people were saying. And just love myself enough to to control my life and to write my own path and to fight for it. And you know what? If I have to make enemies, I will. That's okay. So for me, it's a it's it's a it's a fighting song, and if it's, it's for everybody, um, no matter what job you have, no matter what your dream is, it's just to fight for it and to believe enough in uh, in yourself that you be your own savior. Absolutely. That I, I think that's a message we can all relate to. And that sort of brings me back to something we discussed earlier, because it, we mentioned or we discussed how you changed moving to France, what changed in you. Does that mean that you also identify with that fille d'avant you mentioned in that final bit? Are you the girl that will never be the same again? I am, yeah. I feel like, you know, when sometimes you you feel when you lose your innocence, because and, and sometimes it's sad, but sometimes it's not. It's just that you realize that okay, this is this is not La La Land, and I have to be a certain way now to to um you know to 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 go forward in that life and to achieve what I need to achieve. So yeah, it's a little bit of okay that old woman of me, my 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 old ways are not good in, anymore, and I am a stronger woman. And I will, you know, I will go further like that. And here I am. It's fire now. <laughs> it's fire now. That's the one. <laughs> uh, we'll be seeing that in May for sure. Um, <laughs> now, you're you're very busy, I know. So a final question for me is, is there something you want to say to the um, viewers of ECXtra.com watching this interview right now? Well, I am very excited to be part of that big family. Uh, I didn't know that was that it was so much love, uh, and because I receive a lot of love, and and I just hope we can you know share um, love through music, and yeah, I can't wait to see them on stage I, I'm, when I'm gonna be at Liverpool, and I hope they will love my performance, and we can share that together. I'm sure we will all love <laughs> the performance. Um, I'm gonna say a 
a big merci to you. Um, <laughs> good luck, bon chance in, in Liverpool. <laughs> I'm throwing out all the French I know. Yes, <laughs> you forgot um, croissant baguette. You forgot <clears> that one. <laughs> I, I did my final exams in French, but it's all gone. Um, <laughs> the only French I, I've known in the past month is the lyrics to Evidemment. That's ah, fantastic. Um, <laughs> Lazara, I really want to thank you for this interview and good luck in May. Um, and you guys stay tuned for the next interview series with uh, the Eurovision 2023 participants. See you soon. Thank you.